met Michael through Michael um, Reeves through him. They made three films together. Uh, they met at school. Ian was at Eton and, and uh, Michael was at Harrow. But they used to make home movies together in, in, the, in, this, in the holidays. And they made a film called uh, Revenge of the Blood, Blood Beast in uh, Italy, which I think was the only film that Michael used his own money for. He was very rich, but he never owned up to being very rich and didn't use his money. But I think they shot that for £14,000. And then they made a film called um, The Sorcerers with Boris Karloff for £33,000. And we shot this one for £100,000. Uh, the millions that it's made over the years is absolutely extraordinary. So I'm... I knew Michael through Ian, and I met Paul Ferris, who wrote this extraordinary score, um, when we were in Camelot together in 1964, and he understudied Lawrence Harvey and played um, Sir Clarion, I think, one, one of the knights, and I played the Wicked Mordred. And we started writing songs together, and then we had a three-year contract writing for Cliff Richard and the Shadows, and we wrote a song for Cliff called Visions, and then we wrote a, a film score. Uh, for a film called Marrack 7 with Jean Barry and Sid Charisse. And uh, from there, Paul decided, I think quite rightly, which you'll say in a minute, <laughs> to give up acting and become a full-time <laughs> composer. And uh, I and Ian introduced Michael and them together. And then Michael, after we'd done Marrack 7, Michael invited Paul to write the score for The Sorcerers. And then immediately afterwards, of course, this one, which I think is, I mean, seeing it again tonight, I think Paul's score is absolutely extraordinary. I, mean, I think what he does is, is quite well. I've got a record of it. There is a record of it now out. But to see it with the visuals is absolutely extraordinary. <clears throat> Fantastic. Hilary, how did, um, obviously, did you go through a casting uh, session to be chosen to play the part in the film, or did, did you know Michael before the film? I knew absolutely nobody. <laughs> um, I, I went cold for the audition, it was my first film, I was absolutely terrified. Um, and um, the, the, I, the, everybody knew everybody except me. Um, it was, um, as I said, I was just saying to Nikki tonight actually, I can't, I can't actually remember I see, seeing it tonight is the first time I've seen it on a big screen, curiously, in all these years. Um, but it, it is the most remarkable film. Um, I, I guess I was, um, I guess I was really lucky uh, to be part of it. I, 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 hadn't, I hadn't seen all these people for quite a long time, and I, I bumped into them all quite recently because I've been leading another life. And I had dinner with Ian in, uh, in Los Angeles, but. 18 months ago, and um, he sat at a very nice dinner and, and said, well, of course, I always wanted Nicola Paget, I never wanted you anyway. <laughs> <laughs> he said, but you were quite good, so that was all right. <laughs> um, and I didn't, know, I didn't know any of this. I mean, they all knew each other, and there was lots of jokes, and, 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 and I, knew, I, I, knew, um, I knew Paul. Uh, oh, that's right. We don't, we don't, we don't, that's right. Nicky and I had done Passion Flower Hotel. Uh, which was a, a musical in the West End. Um, John Barry wrote the music. John Barry and Wolf Markovich, that's right, yes. Um, so, yes, that's, that's right. I did, I, did, um, we, I, I did know you and I did know Paul. Um, but um, it, was all, it, was a, it was a real boys' club and I absolutely wasn't part of it. And, you know, I have silly memories, really, because, you know, I was very young. And I, 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 I even just seen that screen then. I could see those two spots on my forehead, <laughs> and there was this makeup woman called Dory Hamilton. Poor soul, I'm sure she's dead now, so I can say it. I, hate, her name? I hated her with such a passion because she <laughs> she was she, she was old then, so she's got to be dead now. And she, she came to me with this makeup brush, and I and I, I, I said I've got these spots, and she said, Oh, don't worry, dear, we've got a little light Egyptian here. And, and, she, and, 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 and I actually the, I, I can remember the, the, the crying. I, I, the, Silly things you remember, you don't remember important things at all. That crime, I was, I was just so frustrated thinking about these bloody spots and that you had to come, come up. I was really absolutely miserable. And actually, Mike, you know, he, 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 I, I, he said, he said, you're only in this state. I said, you see these spots on my forehead. And, 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 he said, and I asked him, she's being horrible to him. And he said, well, get rid of her. I said, oh, no, God, don't, don't, please don't get rid of her. No, not, 
No se on mäkää, mutta siis rahava siljää, se kysyy rapri siitä kohon. Mutta ennen kuin aiheessa silmeen. Well, they're wonderful for us. Because um, of course, you, you, after Witchfinder, you then went on to Oblong Box and then, um, cr well, with the same company, and then uh, Cry the Banshee. So you, you ended up being Vincent Price quite a lot. Can you talk about the man? I adored Vincent. And actually, I, I think he rather quite liked me too. Um, because he said to me, I, I, I played his mistress, his daughter, and his wife. And you said, if you ever get to play my mother, I'll marry you. <laughs> and actually, I wish I'd remembered it, but I was in such a state. I was supposed to drive here today, but my daughter left the oil cap off my car, so I couldn't. And actually, if I had a bit more time, he, he gave me the most... He, he collected Indian Navajo jewellery, and he, 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 he glittered with it, and, and it was very... Great belts and bracelets, and, and he gave me the most beautiful ring, which I still have. He was the most remarkable man. He was very funny, very witty. Um, I, I don't know, I haven't read um, about, uh, actually I, know I haven't heard the radio, I was going to play it in my car on the way down here actually because Ian sent it to me, but um, I gather um, that, you know, how, how much he hated Michael, and I, 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 I saw that, he hated the horse a lot more than he hated anybody else actually, he hated, do you remember, he hated that horse, don't get that goddamn creature out of here, um, he, but he was, um, to me he was always, um, such a gentleman, and actually such an artist. He really was, he was, he was a great man, he was a great cook, great raconteur, he, 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 he acted with everybody, which I found absolutely fascinating. Um, and he, he was, he was, oh, he was a tremendous art connoisseur, he was a great collector. So I think he was a wonderful man. And, and at that time, when he was making Witchfinder, there was this clash of personality between Michael Reeves and him. Because Michael wanted um, Donald Pleasance to play the role. But AIP had one more picture to go from the um, uh, Edgar Allan Poe series with Vincent. So they had him under contract and they said, no, you use Vincent. And in fact, Witchfinder General was released in America called The Conqueror Worm, which was a, 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 a poem of Edgar Allan Poe's, which they read over the credit titles at the beginning to make it into an Edgar Allan Poe film. And they they absolutely fought, but M Vincent Michael wanted Vincent, and in fact, when you look at that, it's one of the best performances Vincent ever gave, particularly in the horror genre, because he's totally honest, totally real, not doing any of the eyebrow raising and the cloak raising which he wanted to do. And Michael kept shouting at him and shouting. Michael was 23 when we were shooting the movie. He had his 24th birthday when we were shooting the movie. And he didn't know how to handle that, because I remember him saying to me, Nick, I'll know when you're doing it wrong, and I'll know when you're doing it right, but I won't be able to tell you how to do it right. Just keep doing different things, and then I'll tell him when it's right. Mm -hmm. And he couldn't handle Vincent. And Vincent fought and fought and fought. And I think it was the last night. It's one of those stories that goes around, different people were there at different times, but on the last night of the shoot in Northwood Castle, when we were there, I think it was something like 83 setups that night, and we were shooting right through the night. And when they came to the axe thing, with, with um, Vincent being hit with the axe, with the rubber axe, Vincent was saying, no, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta cheat it, you gotta cheat it, you can't, you know, and at least, I made 94, young man, he kept on calling my, Michael young man, I made 94 pictures, I made 94 pictures, this is the way we do it in Hollywood. He said, how many pictures have you made? And Michael said, three good ones. <laughs> Vincent finished the night shoot and walked off the set, didn't say goodbye to anybody, and went, boom, off. I think 18 months later, Vincent saw, and fought and fought and fought, but saw an answer print of the movie, and sent Michael the most amazing letter, when he said, if only I'd listened to you, you'd made me give one of the best performances I've ever given. You're a very, very talented young man. Of course you'll never want to work with me again, but if there's anything I can do to help, or in any way, please let me know. Michael died immediately after that in circumstances that have, been, have become kind of a legend. This, that, and it was a mistake. It was a terrible, terrible 1960s mistake. And the NFT did an all-nighter of Michael's work of the three films plus his second unit work on things like the longships and stuff like that. And Vincent flew from America 
at his own expense to introduce the evening and to tell that story against himself, which says a hell of a lot, hell of a lot about Vincent. Brilliant. Daryl, why, why is Witchfinder so important as a, as a sort of, you know, a, a classic example, 60s British horror? Well, as I mentioned earlier, Paul, it's uh, um, a perfect film to pick for tonight. If you're going to illustrate what uh, 1960s British horror was all about, that's the movie. And, um, of course, it also, as I mentioned earlier, ties in with what was going on in world cinema, really. You'd got things like uh, Bonnie and Clyde, The Wild Bunch, Night of the Living Dead going on over in the States. Uh, a new breed of film, films that were being made that were about, uh, you know, um, uh, sort of looking at... Um, uh, things like the situation in Vietnam, if you wanted to look at them in a sort of allegorical sense, and um, uh, which find as very much the, the, the sort of British and European response to that type of movie, I think. And um, as Nicky mentioned earlier, Michael had, um, had uh, uh, sort of laid the ground for it with the, the picture Revenge of the Blood Beast, which uh, has... Uh, contains one scene very, very similar to the opening scene of Witchfinder General. So uh, this, this, this whole sort of witch hunting thing was obviously very, very uh, um, a, a subject that uh, uh, he, he really cared about. And um, of course, uh, Michael's great hero was uh, the American film director Don Siegel, who had made one of the classic um, uh, sort of films of the 1950s on, on the sort of paranoia theme um, in... Uh, um, invasion of the body snatchers. So, uh, um, uh, so Reeves clearly had these sort of concerns in his mind about paranoia, about um, unfair wars, and about politics and so on. And I think he brought that through to Witchfinder General. And I think there was a whole generation of British filmmakers at that time that were doing this, that were bringing um, uh, sort of more allegorical sort of concerns into. Um, popular entertainment and, and using things like the horror movie and the crime thriller to, to tell these other stories. Um, the film works brilliantly as a horror movie, mind you, and also, of course, it's been, it's been termed uh, an English western by many critics, and uh, um, I, I think, uh, you know, not just the frequent scenes of sort of uh, chases on horseback and so on, but I think the, the whole plot and the, and the whole way in which the, uh, the, the, the movie's story plays uh, you, you could almost put cowboy hats on everyone and move it 200 years in the future uh, from, from the, the setting it has and, and uh, um, stick John Wayne and Clint Eastwood in. It would still work, I think. Uh, so, yeah, it's, uh, it's a very, very important British film, not just in the sense of it being a horror movie, but in the sense of us um, uh, sort of showing that we could compete on, on um, the same sort of terms that the young breed of American filmmaker and the, uh, the filmmakers that were coming from Europe, uh, our filmmakers and Michael right at the forefront of that were showing that they could, uh, they could do work that was just as powerful and just as important. Hilary, um, I'll, I'll say, I was touched on it earlier, after uh, Witchfinder General you went on to Oblong Box and, and um, Body Stealers as well, so, um, which I know you're not... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> But you, you obviously was, like, Hammer had their sort of, like, uh, for, for want of a better word, Scream Queens, who, who were regularly appearing in horror films, and obviously AIP were starting to put you in more and more horror. But was this something that you was enjoying, or was it sang out of your control? It wasn't just, actually, because um, they did a dreadful version of Wuthering Heights, too, which I played Isabella. Um, it was in that. that even, we played brother and sister in that. That's right, yes. It's all flooding back to me now. <laughs> um, yeah, the worst thing about Ian is that you can't be prettier than Ian. He's so beautiful, isn't he? <laughs> uh, um, yeah, but no, so, so I did that. Um, and then I did a whole bunch of television. Um, actually, I, I, I stopped acting when I was, um, when I was 27. But there, there's all those things. But a lot of us had contracts then. And you, so you went in and you were somebody's girlfriend. And the lines were all pretty similar. And you didn't, you know, you just thought, well, Whose, whose girlfriend am I this week? You know, there's various, there's professional, you know, all those things. Um, and, and, and then, um, I was doing, and I did quite a lot of stage work in, in between. Um, but, I mean, that's the, the, the other ones.